This week, a meat industry labor leader speaks out about the dangers for slaughterhouse workers. Meghan Markle still supports the Royal Animal Charity. One Toronto resident is transforming a former butcher shop into a vegan deli. This is Live Kindly News. Remember to hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon to turn on notifications, and leave your comments below. According to a new study by researchers from the American Cancer Society and Harvard University, climate change and extreme weather events significantly impact the risk, prevention, and treatment of certain types of cancer. Did you know that there were 17 million new cases of cancer, cancer worldwide in 2018? Worldwide, there will be 27.5 million new cases of cancer each year by 2040. That's astounding. The study, which was published in CA, a cancer journal for clinicians, revealed climate change increases the production of and exposure to known carcinogens. Cancer is currently the second leading cause of death globally. According to the study, almost 10 million people worldwide will die from cancer in 2020. The study's authors explained, climate change is already increasing cancer risk through increased exposure to carcinogens. Extreme weather events also expose people to carcinogens and reduce their ability to seek support. These events can also severely impact the medical infrastructure essential for effective cancer care. Saturated fat is also causing health problems. Studies show consuming saturated fat, which is found in a number of animal products like butter, meat, and cheese, is linked to an increased risk of heart disease. Scientists at Harvard published a series of studies examining the role of saturated fats and plant-based polyunsaturated fatty acids in diets. Research indicates that in over 115,000 subjects, removing as little as 1% of calories from saturated fat and replacing them with polyunsaturated fats, plant protein, whole grain carbohydrates like brown rice, or monounsaturated fats was associated with a reduction in the risk for developing heart disease. In over 130,000 subjects followed for decades, substituting dairy foods rich in saturated fatty acids with monounsaturated or vegetable oil sources was associated with a reduction in developing overall cardiovascular disease including stroke. And in over 125,000 subjects followed for decades, dietary saturated fat was associated with an increased risk of dying during the study period. Coming up. Arnold Schwarzenegger shares his workouts with his donkey, Lulu. Shop Kindly is now open. Order our limited edition teas and totes today. Wearing is caring. The link is available in the description below. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle made headlines in January after announcing they would be stepping down from their roles as senior royals. It was so many months of talks after so many years of challenges. And I know I haven't always gotten it right, but as far as this goes, there really was no other option. What I want to make clear is, we're not walking away. And we certainly aren't walking away from you. Despite leaving her position as a member of the royal family, the former Duchess of Sussex is still supporting the royal animal charity Mayhew. The UK-based animal welfare charity works to improve the lives of dogs and cats. It also helps homeless individuals care for their companion animals. The organization's website still lists Markle as a patron. Mayhew's PR and media officer Sarah Hasselow told Newsweek, Megan's been such a champion of animals and animal welfare. It's always been a passion of hers. Mayhew has been struggling financially amid the coronavirus pandemic. The organization made an urgent care package appeal on its website. The message called for desperately needed supplies of food, litter, and flea and worm treatment. Markle is also speaking out about racism and the recent murder of George Floyd. Markle said in a video shown during a virtual graduation ceremony. And I wasn't sure what I could say to you. I wanted to say the right thing, and I was really nervous that I, I wouldn't or that it would get picked apart, and I realized the only wrong thing to say is to say nothing. Because George Floyd's life mattered, and Breonna Taylor's life mattered, and Philando Castile's life mattered, and Tamir Rice's life mattered. And so did so many other people whose names we know and whose names we do not know. Arnold Schwarzenegger has also spoken out against racism in the United States, saying it has to stop. In an opinion piece written for The Atlantic, the 72-year-old actor, bodybuilder, and 38th governor of California spoke about the need for radical reform, self-awareness, and everyday work to make America safe for Black people. He wrote, 
Patriotism isn't just the blind love of our flag. It is the work we do to improve our country for every American. I want the unlimited opportunity that drew me here in 1968 to exist for every American, regardless of skin color. Schwarzenegger is also finding lighter ways to connect with his fans during these turbulent times. He recently shared a video of his coronavirus lockdown workout routine featuring his donkey Lulu. Schwarzenegger and Lulu are joined in their coronavirus lockdown by Whiskey the Miniature Pony, who also features heavily in the actor's social media content. Lulu loves carrots, Whiskey loves carrots. I just had my little bit of vegan food. Oh, that was yummy, huh? John Grant, president of the United Food and Commercial Workers Local 77 Labor Union, which represents 2,000 food and meat processing plant workers, has spoken out against meat companies amid the coronavirus crisis. Last month, the CDC noted that nearly half of U.S. coronavirus hotspots were linked to slaughterhouses. Contact 7 investigates is uncovering a potential health crisis inside JBS packing plant in Greeley. They're letting people work in the areas where cases have been confirmed of people that have had coronavirus. We're talking about people that are elbow to elbow on these processing lines, um, changing rooms that are just crammed to the brim. Um, and it just it just spreads so quickly within the facility, you know. The UFCW is calling for meat companies to take three steps. Mandatory testing of all workers, location of the virus spread in the plant, and compliance guidance with the California Division of Occupational Safety and Health. Grant explained that if an illness was linked to toxic waste, those plants would likely be shut down. Why isn't this happening with workers' lives? A ham sandwich is not that valuable. Coming up, the Scottish Labour Party introduces new legislation for longer jail time on animal cruelty. You can now get Impossible Foods vegan meat delivered straight to your door. The company officially launched its direct-to-consumer online store, and the vegan burger meat can now be purchased in bulk in four different options. In April, the company revealed that the Food and Drug Administration had relaxed its labeling rules amid the coronavirus pandemic. This allowed Impossible Foods to begin selling its raw, plant-based meat directly to consumers. Well, there's no question that the COVID crisis has really impacted our restaurant partners, but we've seen them innovate, and we've tried to support them as they innovate. You know, whether it's Burger King that sees a large percent of their business now in drive through where the Impossible Whoppers enjoy, to our distributors who are now able to sell our raw product, raw Impossible Burgers, direct to meat eaters at home, so home chefs can cook it up, treat it how they want on their own. New Zealand school systems are advising students to eat less meat and dairy in order to combat climate change. The new curriculum launched in January, according to Reuters. It uses research to show secondary school students how climate change impacts the planet. It also teaches students how consuming meat and dairy products can increase global temperatures. According to data from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, animal agriculture is responsible for 14.5% of all global greenhouse gas emissions. According to New Zealand's Ministry for the Environment, the country's gross GHGs have increased by 24% from 1990 to 2018. In 2018, New Zealand emitted 78.9 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. The ministry explained that the agriculture sector was one of the largest contributors to the country's GHGs, representing 48% of total emissions. The Scottish government has proposed legislation that would increase penalties for animal cruelty charges in Scotland. If passed, violators of the new law would face up to five years in jail and an unlimited amount of fines. I'm delighted to present the Animals and Wildlife Penalties, Protections and Power Scotland Bill to the Chamber and to introduce these important proposals for the Stage 1 parliamentary debate. If the bill is passed, it will modernise and strengthen the implementation of existing legislation impacting on animal welfare, assisting enforcement authorities to ensure that Scotland's domestic animals and wildlife benefit from the best possible protection. The bill unanimously passed its first stage in March, and its second stage on May 26. Colin Smith, Scottish Labour Party politician, told STV News, This bill is a step in the right direction, but Scottish Labour has listened to calls from animal welfare charities that it does not go far enough. One Toronto resident is transforming a former butcher shop into a vegan deli. Set to open in mid-August, Jingle Pear Deli will take over the location of Strickland's Choice Meats. Okay, so... Here it is, walk in, and here's what you find when you have an old butcher shop that has basically just been left as it. 
The family-owned butcher shop was in operation for more than 40 years before closing down. Sinead Hammonds told Liv Kindly that in addition to animal rights, a lack of quality vegan food items on the market inspired her to open the deli. She said, I wanted to bring my personal values as a vegan, a parent, and an animal liberation activist to a business where people could shop for many everyday plant-based items they can't find elsewhere. Items will include ready-to-serve meals like casseroles and cutlets, ready-to-cook items like barbecue kebabs, grab-and-go breakfast and lunch options, and some produce. All of the products will be palm oil free. That's it for today. What do you think about the safety of meat plants? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. We'll see you again next week for Live Kindly News.